One of the oldest and most revered sailing events in the Mediterranean, the Rolex Giralia, and its co-founders, and organizer the Yacht Club Italiano have been supported by Rolex since 1998. This year's milestone 70th edition produced a number of compelling storylines. As overall winner of the offshore race Red Bandit from Germany showcased the talents and development of a crew formed predominantly of young sailors. The race's other main prize, Line Honours, went to the Australian Maxi Black Jack, whose crew are campaigning in Europe after years of success in the Southern Hemisphere. Iconic locations. Compelling action. Camaraderie and tradition. Uniting to create a memorable edition of the Rolex Giralia. These are the highlights of the sport of sailing in the last seven days, globally. The World on Water for June 23, 2023. You buy a racing Amoka, change it radically, leave it to the boast building experts to execute then finally it's finished. This is your first look at it. Pip's reaction is classic. We are sailing only media. Please subscribe, share, like, and check the alerts bell. On day 5 of the International Moth World Championships in Weymouth, England, the wind was from the southeast, and the forecasts showed a brief time when it would be above 8 knots. The big question was how long this would be, and how many races could be completed in this time. In the end it was just the one, with Blue Fleet catching up with Yellow Fleet on races completed. It's day five of the Wetsuit Outlet and Zyke International Moth World Championships. Tantalizingly, there is breeze here in the marina, but out in Portland Harbour, it's very light from the southeast at the moment. We're hoping this is gonna fill in and we can get some great racing in today. Today we did a race, which is better than not racing. Um, it was very stressful, um, light, light patchy air, but made it around the course, so definitely can't complain. Brooks, how have you been uh, passing the time today? I rigged, I put on my wetsuit, then I took off my wetsuit, ate some food, sat here, I sat over there, I sat up there, sat over there. Can you feel a little wobbly? <laughs> and back to you in the studio. Young Jacob Pye from New Zealand won the only race of the day in Blue Fleet, which was his second bullet of the event, continuing his fantastic form from the UK Open just before the world. The battle lines have been drawn at Super Yacht Cup Palma with the unveiling of the class divisions for the 2023 celebration of sail and racing set to get underway on day one. 
Having been denied the trophy last year on countback, Sveje, with Bowie Becking again adding his considerable experience to the race crew, will be out to make amends on the Bay of Palma. It was champagne sailing for Luna Rossa Prada Pirelli out in Cagliari, with Francesco Bruni, and the fast-charging superstar of Italian sailing, Marco Gradoni, pushing the LEQ12 hard in breeze that at times touched 20 knots across billiard table flat water. Checo explains. We're here with Francesco Bruni, helmsman on board Luna Rossa. Gecko, solid conditions, beautiful flats, breezy. Yeah. Uh, very, hot. very nice day. Uh, Weather-wise, we had the uh, a very nice Mistral medium uh, be between 13 and actually between 11 and 20 knots, so very nice flat water. Uh, unfortunately, not the, the waves we are going to see in Barcelona, but uh, uh, that's what we had today, and we, we had a lot of fun sailing today. Besides the usual, what was uh, your focus on today? Well, we we did a, a like pretty much every day a little bit of testing, straight line testing at the beginning of the day, and then uh, some uh, course uh, racing uh, against the the, cha the chase boat, and uh, yeah, some pre starts. And at the end of the day, we focus a lot on a uh, couple of specific uh, maneuvers, and so we we focus a lot on on uh, those specific ones and try to improve uh, uh, this, this uh, yeah was was pretty easy conditions today so uh, yeah we did some good maneuvers also yeah. at some point it seemed like you guys were slowing down and pick bearing away and picking yeah yeah we were trying a few accelerations mm -hmm. yeah uh, and uh, it's uh, it's always an, an important phase where you can gain or lose a lot of meters if you do it right. Uh, so we focused our attention a lot on that. Uh, we had very few moments with mistakes today, but uh, overall was a pretty good day. And it seemed breezy. How come you guys stayed with the J1.5? Well, yeah, we, we were just uh, having, the, our forecast was for the Mistral to slowly drop until lunch. So we were always, waiting for that drop that never happened uh, you know with the forecast is always hard uh, and actually at the end of the day we saw the biggest puffs of the day so yeah we're just uh, a little bit off, off, off pace with, with the forecast but uh, we just accepted the sail was not the right one mm -hmm. structurally was fine and was maybe not the best performance but uh, it was good if I'm not wrong, for the AC75 of uh, the previous campaign, leeways angles were within one degree. Of course, depending on the foil. Uh, is there any big difference with these wings? No, not much. To be fair, uh, if you if you if you do a mistake, you start sliding to leeward. Uh, but overall, I don't see huge differences. Uh, the boat are, uh, is a little bit well in. Proportionally, is a little bit lighter than last cup. It will be the 75 lighter than last cup, but with bigger foils. So, um, yeah, I don't, I don't expect huge differences. And between helming on starboard and port side, is there any? Do you feel the one foil a bit more slippery in terms of side force than the others? Well, uh, there will always be a difference between the foils on on leeway. Uh, it's it's a one of the. Yeah, big biggest question when you when you test, uh, and and if you have slightly different foils, it's very likely that you will have a slightly different sure. leeway. Yeah. Uh, having said that, there are many ways to to change that, uh, but if you have different foils, you can expect different leeways. But there is not a a, a magic recipe. Uh, there is not a magic sure. number that is better than another. Sure, it depends also on the cant angle. Exactly. So. 
eh, Checo, per concludere un commento in italiano per i tifosi. Ah, eh, bellissima giornata a Cagliari, maestrale, eh, quelle che con, chiamiamo normalmente condizioni champagne, e oggi erano le belle giornate, e quindi è stato molto divertente. Siamo usciti un po' presto, ma una mattinata veramente di quelle belle belle. Grazie Checo. Grazie. 11th Hour Racing has fixed the damage caused at the start of leg 7 and is hurrying to Genoa to compete in the final event in this year's Ocean Race, the Inport Race. The winds are light. We step on board and witness the bizarre reality of a different kind of racing as the team battles time constraints and light winds as they try to make it to the Grand A finale. The conditions are not horrible, you know, we have some really really light wind a few hours ago it's quite nice you know it's not a race but it's kind of still a race against time so <laughs> we still want to you know push the boat and uh, get there as soon as possible so uh, different uh, different vibe <laughs> we are not just waiting for the scan every hour and you know it's, uh, it's different but we're still trying to like make the good decision on the routing and sailing properly. It's probably one of the last few times we sailed all together, so I mean, we get to enjoy it, right? <laughs> Racing, but we're uh, we're certainly racing the clock, and it's everyone's ambition to be in Genoa as fast as humanly possible. So uh, yeah, trying to make all the right moves, just uh, threading our way down past the uh, Cherbourg Peninsula, just down past Alderney, where you get a good little push from the current. Had a nice sort of rain cloud as well to give us a bit of extra pressure, and now we're uh, yeah ripping along at 25 knots, just aiming just just to lure to Guernsey. Hopefully, was we'll, hopefully this breeze will hold and. Uh, yeah, we don't get too much of a wind shadow and we can use this pressure to sort of try and push down to Ushant for, uh, for as long as it holds. So yeah, not, not quite the same as racing, but uh, certainly we're trying to get every bit of speed out of the boat. And uh, yeah, anything we can do to get the Genoa faster is, is a good thing. I think the weather's going to be pretty light and tricky once we get to Biscay, so... Uh, we can tell this, this speed all the way that it wouldn't be 10 days, it would be a bit quicker. <laughs> Sailing to Genoa, which is great. Uh, we weren't sure we were going to be able to. Obviously, not in the you know situation we would have liked, but um, I guess best of a make the best of a bad situation. Um, obviously, sort of the pressure's off. I guess the pressure of racing's off, but we're trying to get there as fast as we can. So um, everyone's sort of you know pushing the boat, but not really taking any risks with it, and uh, everyone's in a you know, pretty good mood given the situation. But uh, just um, yeah, but the. The weather's nice, it's sunny, but not really cooperating because we're either uh, dead downwind or dead upwind or no wind. This seems the, the combination so far. And it seems to be it's going to be the combination for the next few days. So um, not moving forward very quickly, but um, yeah, all good. We've got some good upwind, upwind matching against a little cruising boat down here. He's currently going a lot better than us. <laughs> race within the race. Race within the race. So. We're pulling away, we've got some good gains the last 20 minutes, but uh, he's, he's been going around. He's been going around. Leg 7 of the Ocean Race has certainly been one to remember. So much drama. Ahead of 11th hour is the remaining Ocean Race fleet on the way to the finish in Italy. Wholesome PRB reports from the English Channel. Come 
mois que j'ai pas vu, euh, 7 mois que j'ai pas vu la France. Ouais. La dernière fois que j'ai vu la France, c'était à Noël. This feels, this does feel like home. We sail around this coastline so much in the Figaro for the last uh, 10 years. And maybe like um, this little bit here, maybe four times, five, six times every year. And then we're going to go to North Brittany, which is like 12, 14 times every year. Feels like, feels like coming home. But we're not going to stop, we're just going to keep going, keep going south. Well, we might stop because there's not much wind and quite a lot of time. We might actually go backwards. Oh, there we are. Léger à droite du soleil. Là, les tirs, ils sont sur là. À peu près pareil. The Bay of Palma has been a wonderful backdrop to the testing of the America's Cup boats for the Ineos Britannia team. Stable conditions and the hard work and dedication from the whole team has maximized their time on the water and enabled T6 to deliver the numbers. We've been in Palma since October last year. We've had a, a really good, good block of testing. Yeah, looking forward to, to the move to the venue in Barcelona. There was a lot of discussion almost a year ago now as to where we where we base the team, and you know it was a pretty big call to to move away from from UK waters ultimately, which is something that we've done in campaigns previously, and that that comes with its challenges. The the team gets split. Looking over the past six months or so, it was a it was a really really good call. Sailing through the winter in the UK is comes with its challenges, uh, and the great thing about being down here in Palma is that it has a range of conditions. The, the, the climate is generally pretty kind to us and it, it just enables us to, to get more hours on the water. P6 is uh, ultimately it's a bit of a science experiment, it's a test platform, it's a data collection tool. Really its sole purpose is to uh, enable us to build a fast race yacht. It's been well communicated that it's very, very censored up, it's full of instrumentation. Our primary purpose here sailing it is you know, being able to produce clean data that that feeds back into the design engine back in, back in Brackley. What's been great is the level of involvement in the wider team in terms of really, really driving. If the sailing team, the test and validation group as to really what the key questions are that they want answered, you know, our, our role is to ultimately execute those, those testing requirements and, and send that information back. The hope and the goal is, is that these sailing days and that data sent back is going to result in a boat that doesn't just look the part but goes the part too you know ultimately with with this campaign the a real key part has been the merging of two organizations we've got america's cup types and the mercedes f1 design team as well and it's not an easy process to merge two two organizations together let alone at the scale of what we've been we've been trying to do over a very short period of time but hopefully the the, the proof and the, the hard work is is worth it with a with a race boat that we launched that we can be proud of and, and race well and hard been able to get into some two boating out here in Palma, which was a goal that we, that we had from the outset. It was a big success actually. The T6 wasn't and never, never was designed to race and we really didn't necessarily know or have any sight of what the performance would be like of the AC40. What's been quite fortunate is that it, it does appear that T6 and the AC40 are going to be capable of racing and testing against one another going forward, which again is, a, is, is exciting for us as a sailing team rolling into Barcelona, but, but also it, it offers another, another opportunity of comparison, testing and, and really you know, helping drive those, those key decisions that we need to make going forward. As we go through this campaign, it, there's, there's milestones, isn't there? And launching the test boat is a milestone. Completing testing is a milestone. Getting to venue is a massive milestone. And then, you know, the next one after that will be uh, be launching the race boat. And, you know, we're, we're slowly edging our way to the sharp end of this campaign. And it, it's exciting. And I think the whole group is is, uh, is, is gagging to get to, the, get to the race boat.
With one day to go until the conclusion of the Formula Foil World Championship, back after last year's positive experience on Garda Trentino, and organized again by Circolo Surf Torbol, on behalf of the Italian Sailing Federation, there have been 23 races so far out of the 25 scheduled. The event, which began last Saturday, was characterized by a generous week of wind, which kept the athletes from Switzerland, Poland, Czech Republic, Portugal, Slovakia, Spain, Norway, Argentina, Lithuania, Sweden, Germany, Great Britain, Holland, as well as Italy, very busy. John Emmett, British Olympic sailing coach, has been busy this week and he has covered two events, the Moths in the UK and the Ilkas at Kiel Week. He talked to the happy winners. Well, it's pack-up time here and the Moth World's concluded with only two races, so unfortunately not a regatta. At that point, after two races, Helen and Scott, you were leading. Just tell us about the week and uh, hopefully we'll get out the rain before too long. <laughs> uh, thanks, John. Yeah, it was a tough week. Um, obviously, just not much racing, which is what we all came here for. But I'm really grateful to the race committee, the volunteers, the UK moth class, um, the Weymouth and Portland National Sailing Academy, and everyone that made this event happen. Um, everyone was doing their best and the wind did not play ball. Um, I'm proud of myself for putting two pretty good races together. Um, I had you had a good lead after two races. Thanks, yeah. Um, you just have to be ready to capitalize when you do go racing. And I'm, you know, this doesn't show in any results. Um, it's intangible, but just keeping my head in the game um, every day when it was, you know, continued disappointment and trying to stay positive and motivated. Yeah, I mean, the boat part was lovely. You know, people were very focused. and. Actually looking, you know, even after two races, there, there wasn't any surprises for me for the people I saw at the, at the front of the fleet. It's the people I've been talking to all week. And that's a, that's a very interesting thing. What's uh, for you next? I mean, I, I, I'm sure you want to pack up before you get too wet, but <laughs> further, further afield than that. Um, yeah, so a big transition for me right now. I'm actually about to fly back to San Francisco, um, where I've been living and working. And then in a couple of weeks, I'll be full time in Barcelona as a mechatronics engineer with American Magic. Brilliant. That's what we wanted to hear. We're trying <laughs> to get it out of you earlier. And that's really exciting. To, and there's a lot of AC guys here. Um, what will be next for you in terms of your moths? Uh, I had a little chat with uh, Jacob and uh, he's already bigging up next year. <laughs> Yeah, I'm planning to bring my moth to Barcelona. It has to go back to the U.S. because of carne stuff, but um, I am planning to have it there. Don't know how much I'll be able to sail it with everything going on, but um, for me, even if it's just a couple times a month, um, it's just for the soul, you know. <laughs> it's a good release. Um, so I am planning to train a little bit, and then I'm really looking forward to the Worlds in New Zealand in 2024 at Manly Sailing Club. Brilliant. Well, very best of luck, and thanks so much for chatting to us. Thanks, John. Thank you. Wow, it's been a really frustrating week here at the Wayne and Portland National Sailing Academy. It's now the pack up and believe it or not, it's starting to rain. The South West lead did come in. No racing today. Not quite sure what to say to all the visitors. But Jacob Pye, you won every race you sailed and uh, you must take some positives from that. Uh, well, yeah, it's been a very disappointing last week for everyone here. And um, I mean... 
yeah, there's been a few very good pointers leading up to the regatta with all the training and all the other races that we've been managing to put in. But I mean, it's just been so, so disappointing that the wind hasn't played its part. I mean, some people were here for, uh, I think, a month before the racing started. Yeah, well, I mean, almost they, they've almost made a better call because they've had a, I mean, a better time really. There was more wind before then, so. Unfortunately, it's come to what it is. Yeah, and I'm looking in the background, and the, the South West League has come in. You were cut off by the time. Um, but I just have to say, you know, congratulations. You were the person who did the best in what was, unfortunately, a non regatta. Yeah, and uh, that's just what it is sometimes. And um, I'm grateful for being here. And um, hopefully, uh, next year in Manly, uh, we get to put on another, another well, or more decent regatta and a better worlds. Oh, so sorry, is that your home club? Yes, home I'm, club, yeah. I'm so sorry, I didn't know that. So let's have a shout out to how fantastic next year will be. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And um, I'm, I, I can pretty much tell you right now that the, that time of year is perfect for our moth sailing worlds. So is it a thermal? Well, we get a nice sea breeze around that time of year. And um, hopefully uh, we're spaced between the Sail GP and America's Cup so we can get a f quite a few more. Um, so the top guys have top no guys excuse? Here. <laughs> no, well, at this point, at this point, yeah. I'm not well, sure I saw point. Russell in the in the background, so we can we can yeah. <laughs> hold him to that. Yeah. Um, what's up for you next? Next, well, yeah, we're heading back to New Zealand, and at this rate, um, we're just going to be. I'm just going to be going back into the moth, and I mean, yeah, it's at my home club, so I really want to make a um, a big impression, a good impression. So I'm going to be putting in a lot of work with a with a few other guys there. I'm sure we're going to get quite a few others there training up for that, that event too. Oh, good man. Well, wishing you so much uh, for the future. So much luck. Thank you very much. Cheers. Ilka 6, Kilowaka champion. Can you introduce yourself and tell us about your week? Uh, it's Charla Donartaj from Turkey. I'm so glad you said that. <laughs> Why? I find it very difficult to pronounce non-English no, names. Really? Okay, Chala. Okay. <laughs> I will practice. <laughs> okay, no, no worries, no worries. And yeah, I'm selling Ilka sixth class. And it was a it was a week of two halves. You had a lot of waiting, yeah, a lot of exactly, light winds. Exactly. And then today looks completely different. Yeah, today was completely different, and the week was uh, light winds, a lot of hours on the water, and we in the end we managed to do six races. Um, and today was completely different. It was windy, like 15 to yeah, 16 knots, and it picked up. Um, in the beginning, it was more like uh, patchy, not so much uh, like it's gusty. So yeah, I managed to win and I'm really happy. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, I mean, the, the conditions, it was an offshore wind, so it's always going to be pretty shifty. But the beginning of the week, have I got this right? One day over 10 hours on the water. Exactly, yeah. Eight and a half hours, actually. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And they pushed hard uh, to make the races. And in the end, they only did two races and one cancelled because there was no wind at all. <laughs> and finally, we, they sent us in. So yeah, one and a half races or something, was it? They, they got, you, uh, got you started or? Yeah, yeah, they did. <laughs> and then at the upwind mark, they... Wow cancelled. Well, I'm glad you got the full series in because it meant you had the medal race which is always a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, what do you think about the the other sailors who are here? Was it a tight tight week? Some people are in Marseille and... Yeah 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 but here also like we had light winds and most of the sailors actually light wind sailors here uh, so that's why I'm really happy that I was able to win and it was tough. I mean we, when it's light wind it's as you know it's always like uh, shifty or some gusts are coming there, some gusts are coming there, so uh, it was not easy um, and they were competing also really nice. Because you, you had a nice little points gap at the end but yeah. that, that never tells the full story. Yeah, exactly. um, what's next for you because we're coming up uh, well just over 12 months to go to a rather important regatta so mm -hmm. how's your progress going? Um, next will be test event in Marseille in 10 days um, so I qualified for that and afterwards we have a small coaches regatta in Netherlands close to Scheveningen and afterwards we have Worlds which is the qualification for the Olympic Games. So it's probably the second most important regatta in the entire four 
four years. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's see, we are preparing for this. We train hard and we, we will give our best, as always. <laughs> well, congratulations. Thank you very much for your time. Best thank of luck for the future. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs>